Hey, it's Chris and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going over the unboxing and first impressions of the brand new Profitech Pro 800 2.0. Firstly, as you'll notice, this coffee bar got a little bit of a makeover. I'll share more details about how I did that in next week's video. Also, I do apologize if there is a little bit of fan noise in this video. Unfortunately, there is a heat wave going on right now, and I do need the AC to be kept on at full blast. Secondly, this video is not sponsored, but is supported by those of you that use my affiliate links and can also join as a channel member to further help support the channel. And finally, full disclosure, this machine was sent to me by Profitech in collaboration with their US distributor, Whole Latte Love, but as always, all thoughts and opinions remain my own. Okay, so as you probably saw earlier, this machine is insanely heavy. It arrived on a small pallet and weighed a total of roughly 150 pounds. Luckily, the delivery driver was kind enough to help me bring this up the stairs. While the whole delivery was about 150 pounds, the machine itself I think is about 80. So going into the unboxing experience, it surprisingly came in the same size and shape box as the Profitech Pro 700, despite being like twice the weight. On top, we have our usual accessories box with a manual, plumbed in hose, plumbed in drip tray piece, a tamper that is uninspiring and cheap feeling, and three portafilters. We get a bottomless, a single spout, and a dual spout portafilter, which is very nice to see. All have this very nice wooden handle to them and feel very well built. One note about these portafilters is that while they are 58mm, I'm not sure if they're intended to be used with other E61 machines. The little flanges on the sides are at a diagonal versus the usual E61 portafilters that are straight. They do still slot in, but I'd probably recommend against using them for an E61 machine and vice versa, just out of caution. Okay, so moving on to the machine itself. First, this machine is heavy, as mentioned, about 80 pounds. It's still doable alone to bring it out of the box and onto a countertop, but definitely be careful and don't be overconfident. Now before I take that tarp off, here is your reminder to drop a like and subscribe to get notified of when the full review of this machine drops. Okay, so taking off the protective tarp, we can now see the machine in all its glory. First step, screw on the lever handle. Next, remove the heat warning stickers. Also, whoever designs these stickers to leave ungodly amounts of residue behind has a very special place in hell waiting for them. Please, manufacturers, use vinyl stickers or something that won't leave residue behind. After a good 10 minutes of scrubbing with a microfiber cloth, I have a nice and clean machine. The cup warming tray and drip tray have a protective film that also needs to be peeled off prior to use. With the machine unboxed, all that's left to do is pull a shot. But before we do that, I do want to make sure that everything is set to the water reservoir, which means making sure that the drip tray is sealed, the water line is set to reservoir, and the switch is also flipped to the reservoir position. Finally, let's pull a shot. Now firstly, this machine is astonishingly quiet. Other than the pump filling the boiler, this machine makes virtually no sounds. In fact, I think if plumbed in, this machine will make no sounds. Secondly, the shot is incredibly smooth with a thick syrupy texture. Not a lot of clarity, but mostly well balanced with lots of sweetness. I've only had this machine for a little bit, but I can already tell dialing in on this is simultaneously going to be tougher, but also more forgiving. Steam is great on this machine. Huge steam power, but not quite like the Pro 700, although still very easy to get nicely textured milk. Build quality-wise is just about the same as the Pro 700 from first impressions, which is not a bad thing. It's got a very familiar build quality with obviously some key differences in the wood accents and the fact that the steam and hot water levers are used instead of knobs. Personally, I'm a huge fan of these levers over knobs. There were a few minor cosmetic imperfections I'm not happy with, but I'll save that for the full review. So anyways, those are my quick thoughts, first impressions, and unboxing experience of this brand new beast of a machine. I'm super excited to get into it further and explore the world of levers. If you do have any questions or things you'd like to know or answered in the full review, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. As always, thank you for watching, like this video if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.